My name is Sander Goodhart. I'm a professor of English and Jewish studies at Purdue University. Uh, I teach Bible as literature. I teach French intellectual history for the last 50 or 60 years. I teach dramatic literature. Uh, I've been a lifelong, uh, I guess eventually a partner, but now originally a, a student and now a student and a partner of Rene Girard's work. Uh, he was my teacher at Buffalo. I did my PhD at University of Buffalo uh, on Oedipus. And I have followed his work and been part of the Colloquium on Violence and Religion, president of that organization. And uh, Suzanne at one point came to me in our uh, meeting at Ghost Ranch. The, the Colloquium on Violence and Religion met at Ghost Ranch. And Suzanne uh, came with some other people from her, her church. Uh, in, in Will Met, <clears throat> and they uh, expressed interest in what I was doing and why someone who was Jewish would be attracted to the work of Rene Girard. I also talked to her about Emmanuel Levinas, who, who, with whom I got familiar in 1983. Uh, you know, Rene was invited to give a, a talk at, at uh, a Sechazi, Sechazi La Salle, which is the, uh, so it's a great honor, it's a chateau in, in, in France, and it's a great honor to be be made the center of, of, uh, of, of their uh, colloquia there. And so he invited a number of us to, to join him. And I said, well, you know, what are you going to talk about? And he said, Catholicism. And he had, he'd only talked about violence and, and imitative desire to that point. So I thought, well, you know, I, I can't certainly talk about Catholicism in, in 1983. I, and I'm not, I'm not Jewish. I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm not, I'm not Catholic. I'm not Protestant. I, you know, I, but, but what I could do is talk about Judaism. And so I started reading. And I read Martin Buber and Franz Rosenzweig and, and Emmanuel Levinas. And, and I realized that there was this whole other uh, dimension, the ethical dimension, that uh, Rene's work hadn't explored and that was complementary to Rene's work. And so I began to do Levinas as well. So in other words, between Levinas and, and, uh, and Rene Girard's work, I have uh, what I think of as, a, as a, 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 a good picture, a good sense of Oh, on the one hand, the sacrificial, the way that we are all uh, in culture, uh, we also have some relationship to what Rene calls the sacrificial, and at the same time, the possibility of resisting the sacrificial, and, and, and what uh, Levinas calls the ethical, and the way of living without doing violence to others. And violence, I understand to be uh, difference, um, asserted in the extreme. You know, the concept of difference is a, really a concept of separation. I, I, this, this here and this there, it's, it's all differences. And, and a bunch of, of, uh, of, of ethnologists from around 1945 on began to say that culture is really an elaborate matrix of, of differences. And, and I began to understand through Rene, through Rene Girard's work, that violence is really different, difference broken down, and broken down to to such an extent that one begins to assert difference when it no longer works. And the more one asserts it, the more inefficacious it becomes. And the more inefficacious it becomes, the more one asserts it. And that's violence, that's the situation of violence. So, so it's very easy for the situation of Oedipus uh, speaking with Tiresias, for example. Uh, you know, Oedipus says, I am the king and you are the prophet. And, and you know, we're looking for a, a criminal. And Tiresias says, I shouldn't have come. And Oedipus says, what? You're, you're withholding information you have? And he says, well, you know, I, you don't want to know what I don't want to, what I'm about to tell you. So, well, what is it you are about to tell us? And they very quickly begin to fight. And violence erupts as a result of difference, of their, of their statement of difference and, and the fact that it's not an efficacious interaction with them. <clears throat> so anyway, so I work with these kinds of materials. Suzanne invited me to become uh, part of the project. She knew, she knew me from cover, and she invited me to, to join the, the, the uh, Raven Board, the Raven Foundation Board, uh, and to work with her on this, this peace project. So I began thinking, uh, when she asked me uh, fairly recently, what, what I want to say about it. What is my position on peace? I mean, the, the simple answer is, I want peace. You know, peace is good. Uh, beyond that, it becomes slightly more complicated. And I realized um, that peace is what Aristotle calls an epiphenomenon. That is to say, it's something that comes later. It's like happiness. Uh, Aristotle says we don't 
you know, there's a very common phrase, think no man happy until he has reached the end of his life free from pain. And all the Greek dramatists say it, you know, Sophocles, Aeschylus, Euripides, they all, they all say that. And Aristotle uh, in, says this is because hap happiness is an epiphenomenon. Well, it seems to me peace is the same sort of thing. What you want to do is, is, is find ways of avoiding the dangers of sacrifice becoming violence. So at the moment when sacrifice and violence have become confused, that's when, that's when you have problems, and that's when you are in a situation that would be other than, other than peace. So uh, I began to ask myself, well, how do we, how do we think about it if, if it's this epiphenomenon, if we can't, we can't have it as a, as a goal, can't have peace as a goal, then, then how do we think about peace? And the answer, I think, is Thich Nhat Hanh, as we were saying before, that Thich Nhat Hanh, peace is the way. It's not the goal, but it's the way. What, what we can change is ourselves. We can't, in any significant way, I know this, this may not be a popular view, but I think, I really think we cannot, in any significant way, change others. Um, Levinas says the suffering of the other individual is never redemptive. And so, inevitably, what we do vis-a-vis -vis the other uh, has the, the potential for being violent towards the other. What we can do and what we can assign ourselves is the task of, of free, freeing ourselves from uh, uh, violence by, by assigning our own suffering a meaning. Uh, and I mean, I, I'm not, you know, Levinas does not offer a program and Rene Girard does not offer a program. But it seems to me in terms, of, in terms of peace, what we want to begin to think about are some of the ways in which what we could call the ethical that precedes the law operate. We've, we've been speaking a little bit about that today. Uh, the fundamental understanding of human relations for someone like Emmanuel Levinas is that human relations proceed through the face-to-face. -face. Uh, the face-to-face, -face, the face is not an object. The face, uh, Levinas says, uh, ethics uh, is, is an optics insofar as uh, eth the ethical is not something that follows the law. It's not something that follows politics. We often think of the ethical after after uh, Immanuel, someone like Immanuel Kant, who says that you know what it is that I should do, the, the definition of the ethical is what everyone should do. Uh, Levinas proposes a, an alteration of of that Kantian concept. He says the ethical needs to precede the law. The ethical has to proceed through something that he calls the face to face, and the face to face is the extent to which I am capable of being vulnerable, the extent to which I'm capable of of b being completely open. Uh, the face. Levinas says is not an object. The face uh, is utter nakedness. I mean, it's an interesting definition of the face. Face is nakedness. It's openness. Uh, it's openness to possibility. It's openness to, to all sorts of things. It's simply openness itself. Uh, m imagine an ethical uh, possibility based on openness, based on the face. Uh, when, when, you, when we talk about the political, we're always talking about three people, which means that we're, we've, we've abrogated the face-to-face. When there's just two of us, when there's when there's just Gerard and myself talking, we, we, we can have a face-to-face -face and we can be ethical towards each other. But as soon as a third person enters the picture, I have the same obligations towards the other person, the third person that I have towards Gerard, and what do I do? So the questions of justice, questions of the political, questions of the juridic of law, questions of, of public morality, all these questions come into play when there are three people. But if we begin to think about the ethical as is coming from the two, maybe we can then, or for, and, and the two from, through the face-to-face, -face, maybe we can then think about uh, uh, some way of, of implementing uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's suggestion that, that, that peace is a way and not an end. I mean, I love that the, the phrase, the, the book that I'm referring to, of course, is Peace is the Way. And what it means to me is that he's, he's entering the, the polemic of, of, of the, the means and the end. Peace is the way, it's not the end. Uh, so if we want peace, we have to be peace. We have to live peace. We have to act like peace. And it sounds uh, very strange to to think about these uh, terms and ter these ideas in, in in those terms. But it seems to me that there's something like that. And what that means for me, in terms of the two thinkers I've I've talked about, would would be uh, uh, in terms of Levinas, for example, would be infinite responsibility. Levinas talks about infinite responsibility for the other individual. And Rene Girard talks about living anti-sacrificially. It would take a whole lot longer for us to, to try to uh, uh, uncover what exactly these, these terms mean.
but infinite responsibility means that I come from the other. That, that I, instead of defining myself in terms of myself, in terms of a, a self, an a autonomy, an auto namer, an auto nomos, a self namer, I define myself as a, as an other namer, as as someone who's named by the other. You know, I discover my my name through the other. The other has named me. I didn't name myself. I may change the other's name for me, but the, but the other has named me. In some sense, it's I I or I'm already beholden to the other as soon as I show up. And my responsibility is a way of uncovering my filiation, uh, or affiliate, not just affiliation, but my filiation to the other individual uh, prior to prior to any political or, or, or third party experience. So maybe that's, maybe that's a good place to stop. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe you have a question that you want to ask me? Um, yeah, I, I think I do. Uh, maybe just the concluding statement that I think what, what we can, again, what we, we have, we, there's not much, we, we were severely limited in what we're capable of changing in others. Uh, you know, we, we're, in consumer society, we're, we're aware of all the choices we have. These, the, we, we both have choice and we have very little choice. You know, we, we, can, we can choose to have this kind of bread or that kind of bread. We can choose to have that, this kind of butter or that kind of butter. Um, and, and, and that's what we can choose and what, what, what theorists call the symbolic when we go into social relations and we talk with others. What we can change much more significantly is ourselves. And even that would be hard, but that, that's about the only thing that, that can involve significant change. So it seems to me that, that, that we, you know, the, the Beatles, I mean, I'm, I'm a child of the 60s. I was born in 46, and, and you know, uh, there's a song called about revolution. And, you know, he said, before we think about changing others and changing the world, we need to be thinking about changing ourselves. And it seems to me that's, that's, the, that's the place to start uh, with the self in relationship to others through the face-to-face -face and, and, and through, the, through the two uh, and not through the three.